to graph logarithmic function. And by graphing functions from the previous lessons that we did, we know that when we have a function, let's say y equals x, the graph of this function will be a linear function. And it only change or it changes when you have y equals x plus 1 or y equals negative x plus 3, but it's still going to be a line. So the behavior of all the function with y equal to x is just going to be a line. Same goes with y equals x squared. So y equals x squared is just the parabola. And if we have the same function, we know that even if the x will change, let's say it's negative x or x plus 2 or parentheses x plus 3 squared minus 3, it's all um, going to be a parabola, but it's just changing because it's moving around the xy plane in your graphing or in your graph right here. With that, we know that if we have y equal to x cubed, we already know that the behavior of y equals x cubed will have similar behavior to this particular um, function. It's same principle with a logarithmic graph. So if you know the behavior of a logarithmic graph, you're pretty much going to be able to visualize different set of logarithmic functions based on the equation. So we already um, discussed about the inverse of a logarithm. So exponential function and logarithmic function are related. And in its graph, it's also being related to. So this will be the graph of your exponential function. Let's say you have y equals a to the x. And if you convert this into a logarithmic function, you can change it into y equals logarithm of x base a. So notice that your a's here will just be positive numbers. So you have to remember that all the a's that we are using today will all be positive number. And in that case, if we have an exponential function that looks similar to y equals a to the x, the graph of this exponential function will behave like so, with a y-intercept at 0, 1. So whenever you have y equals 230 raised to x, the graph will pretty much behave like this, with an x-intercept at 0, or y-intercept at 0, 1. And if you have y equals 2 to the x, it will still have the same behavior as this graph with the same y-intercept. So for the exponential function, the domain of this function will all be real numbers because you will notice the graph of the exponential function is covering all the numbers along the x-axis. However, for the range, it's just y greater than 0 or all the positive values of y because in this graph, it will only cover your um, positive y-axis. Now your y-intercept is not changing for y equals a to the x. It will always be at 0 and 1. Now to its inverse, which is the logarithmic function, they are simply related. Now how are they related? This, the graph of your logarithmic function is simply the reflection of your exponential function on the line y equals x. So this is basically the wall, or you can say that this is the mirror where you uh, flip your exponential function to so that you will create your logarithmic graph. So your logarithmic graph will have a y or an x-intercept this time, and it's going to be at 1, 0, and its domain will just be x greater than 0 because you will notice that it cuts right here, so all the possible values of your x will all be positive number and for your range the values will all be real numbers because it can cover all the values along the vertical axis. So your y intercept for the logarithm of x base a is going to be 1 and 0. So once again just like exponential function if you change the value of your a it could be 1, 2, 3 or 283 the logarithmic behavior or the graph of its logarithmic behavior will still be the same. And it's true for the following examples. So if I'm going to graph y equals logarithm of x base 5, f of x equal to logarithm of x base 32, and the inverse of logarithm of x base 7, it will somehow be related to each other. So the graph of logarithm of x base 5 will have this particular uh, model for the graph because, as I've mentioned on the previous slide, 
your base will change if you have any positive number for your base your graph will behave similar to this one so you have your x intercept at 1 0 your domain will be all positive x and your range of values will all be real numbers and it behaves like so so for problem number two f of x is equal to logarithm of x base 32 even though they have different base the graph of Problem number two will still be the same as problem number one because they are related. It is just that the base is different, but the behavior of the graph will still the same. Now, for the inverse of logarithm of x base 7, if we will graph logarithm of x base 7, it will just be the same graph as problem number one and problem number two. With an x-intercept at 1, 0, domain is all positive number and the range will all be real numbers writing out or creating your wall for y equals x and reflect it along the wall this will be the inverse of your logarithmic function which is basically an exponential function similar to the example that I've shown you on the previous slide and this is how we graph the following logarithmic functions using the behavior or the graph that I've shown you on the first slide Now, logarithmic function is not limited to uh, just the reflection along the y equals x or on the line y equals x. So sometimes it can translate or it can move around your x, y plane. So you have here several logarithmic functions and it has different forms and it will be related to each graph right here on my x, y plane. So I'm going to use this as my reference. So imagine this is your... Um, logarithmic graph and I'm going to show you how it translates or how it moves along the xy plane. So I have four logarithmic functions. Logarithm of x base 5, logarithm of negative x base 5, logarithm of x plus 3 base 5, and logarithm of x plus 3 minus 2 base 5. So notice that they all have the same basis. The only thing that's changing is basically this values right here. And how will it translate to our xy plane. So the first graph is our standard graph of a logarithm, similar to the first few examples that I've shown you. So if this is my logarithm of x base 5, the graph of logarithm x base 5 or its standard graph will be here, which has an x-intercept at 1, 0, and it behaves like so. Now if I'm going to graph logarithm of negative x base 5, I will simply reflect this logarithmic graph along the y-axis and I will have my logarithm of negative x base 5. So this is how logarithm of negative x base 5 behaves. And for the second graph, I have logarithm of x plus 3 base 5. I'm going to start again with my standard graph, which is logarithm of x base 5. And to translate logarithm of x plus 3, all you have to do is to move the entire graph three units to the left. So x plus three is three units going to that direction. So I have one, two, and three. So this will be the graph of logarithm of x plus three by base five. So what if this is logarithm of x plus five base five? So therefore, I'm going to move five units to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is where my logarithm of x plus 5 will be. Now, if it's logarithm of x minus, uh, minus 3, it will be moving to the right. So I have 1, 2, 3. This will be the graph of logarithm of x minus 3. And that's how it translates for the first or for the third graph of logarithm. And for my last example, I have logarithm of x plus 3 minus 2 base 5. So going back to my standard logarithmic graph, for logarithm of x plus 3 minus 2 to translate in the xy plane, I will move 3 units to the left, 1, 2, 3, and the negative 2 right here, or minus 2, means I need to translate my entire graph 2 units going down. So I have 1, 2. So this will be the graph of logarithm of x plus 3 minus 2 base 5. So that's how your logarithm behaves based on its 
translation on the examples that I've shown you in this example.